All right, well, welcome to another time in the Word of God together and with the Holy Spirit. Let's look to Him before we begin. We look to you because you are already looking to us, Almighty God, loving Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit at work, feeding your people, calling your people into your love and power and peace. Thank you today as we look into your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the title for today is a question, as you can see, but is it biblical? There is surely a lot of good Bible teaching available to us, but in such an atmosphere, it is easy to become comfortable with what is being taught without ever comparing it yourself to what the Bible says. For an example, certain statements are regularly taught by some of God's spokesmen and then spread from one person to another and are accepted as accurate. Two of them specifically we want to look at today. One is the statement, perhaps you've heard it, it's, it, does, it is getting around, it has been for a while. One is, God cannot bring evil, for he has none. And the second one is, he cannot bring sickness, for he has none of that either. All right, we're going to look at the truth of God then from the Word of God about these two statements. Is it really true that God cannot bring evil? Let's look at a few scriptures. In 2 Kings 22, a prophetess was given this marriage, this message, to share with the king of Judah. And it was, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I bring, I bring evil on this place and on its inhabitants, because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the work of their hands. Therefore my wrath burns against this place, and it shall not be quenched. Verses 16 through 17 of 2 Kings 22. Clearly, God has said, as he began that sentence, I bring evil. Just to be sure, the following verses are listed for the specific words in this subject without giving the background as we just did. <clears throat> in 1 Kings 21, 21, we read, Behold, I will bring evil upon you and utterly sweep you away. Likewise, Deuteronomy 28, 61 has, quote, Every sickness and every plague the Lord will bring upon you until you are destroyed. Another similar revelation of what is in the category of evil from God is given in 2 Chronicles 18, 22 where the prophet proclaims what God showed him. Quote, The Lord has put a deceiving spirit in the mouth of these your prophets, for the Lord has proclaimed disaster against you. So, as it has been said, disobedience to the law of God invites the curse of God. Yet another word of evil from the Lord, evil from the Lord, whom it is said doesn't have evil, was given to Ahab, king of Israel. And that word to Ahab was, but I will bring the evil upon his house. 1 Kings 21, 29. Surely in thinking about this subject, we would remember that all that the Lord brought upon Egypt. Remember that? When he warned Pharaoh, quote, I, I will send all my plagues on you, your servants and your people. Exodus 9, 14. 
These are powerful words, surely, to get the attention of the people and of us, even though we're not under the old covenant. <clears throat> okay, after sending those plagues, still talking about Egypt and God saying that he would send all his plagues on her, the Lord, quote, the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. You remember that? Exodus 12, 29. So far, we have seen the Lord warned people that he would bring evil, and he did so many times. We should also remember the Lord kept his word, quote, if that nation turns from its evil, if that nation turns from its evil, I will relent concerning the calamity I plan to bring on it. Jeremiah 18.8. 8. Also in Jeremiah 36.3, God explains, Perhaps the house of Judah will hear the calamity I plan to bring on them in order that every man will turn from his evil way. Then I will forgive their iniquity and their sin. This is what the heart of God wants, but he will not force it upon his people. Notice the calamity is necessary as he said, for many to come to repentance. Even with the trouble in this land now, although some are repenting, and thank God for that, it appears a great many are not, at least not yet. Nor do we even often allow the thoughts that by turning away from God, we may be turning into his judgment. Well, Another, another one, remember we said the fir first one was, does God even, it says that God doesn't have evil, and the second one was that he doesn't have sickness. Therefore, he can't give any. All right, is it accurate to say the Lord does not give sickness because he has none to give? Well, we've seen above Quote, as in the diseases of Egypt, Deuteronomy 28, 60, as in the di diseases of Egypt, that God does bring evil and sicknesses. Even if God has no sickness or no evil, as some say, we know he has access to both, as we have seen from these words. Even in the New Testament, now we're moving into the New Testament, we learn of the danger of provoking sickness as Jezebel's destination from Revelation 2.22 reveals, quote, God said, I will throw her on a bed of sickness and those who commit adultery with her unless they repent. And that is written to a church. That is written about people in the church who have professed salvation. Certainly the teaching of Hebrews 10, also in the New Testament, is meant to caution us so we do not presume on God even though, even though we're not under the law. It's still possible to presume upon God. Verse 26 of Hebrews 10 warns, If we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. That's Jesus' sacrifice for our sins. He's, if he's not received, there's nothing left for, for any cleansing of sin. Notice this is continuous. God's talking here in verse 26. As uh, I'll say it again, if we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, then there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. Such should be warned, quote, how much, 
how much severer punishment. Who should be warned? Those, as he said, who's continually, who sin, or continue in sin willfully after they have received the knowledge of the truth. Notice, such should be warned how much severer, severer punishment do you think he should deserve who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has regarded as unclean the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has insulted the Spirit of grace? Verse 29. Wow. We may think, I would never do that. And it is true, if. We would not do that if we do not rely on self, but on the Son of God who gives us forgiveness, power, and victory. Amen. That's a big difference. All right, for our own God, <clears throat> he makes it clear as he does in, for our own good, excuse me. He makes it clear as he does in Exodus fifteen twenty six. If you will give honest heed to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, and give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have put on the Egyptians. But notice that happily he closes these words for us. For I, the Lord, am your healer. Can you hear that above all that we've read about the uh, judgment that has come on God? I, the Lord, am your healer. That's who he is. That who he, that's who he wants to be. That's the way he wants us to know us and have peace. Yes, if we abide in Christ, we are abiding in our healer. If we are abiding in Christ, we are abiding in the one who said, I am the Lord, your healer. Amen. Well, we want to close with a quote from Hebrews 10.38. But my righteous one shall live by faith. You and I can live in Christ, in our healer, by faith. Amen. Bless you.